Welcome to part three of week four of CIS 204 Unix shell scripting and utilities. In the previous uh, sections we talked about uh, grep and some basic wild carding and now I'm going to spend some time and talk about wild cards in other words substitution um, on its own. Wild cards can be used in, in any number of commands. Uh, here's what you have to understand. Wild cards, uh, a particular type of wild card, may show up in more than one command, but it may be used differently in those commands. The problem is, is that the various commands are scripts that were eventually, or actually programs that were compiled. They were written by different people and their understanding of how they wanted to use a wild card may be different from person to person. There was no standardization in Unix or Linux for that matter in how to define a wild card. So tool A may define an asterisk uh, as being capable of doing this while tool B defines it as something completely different. So. It's just something as you use the tools you will have to become familiar with the wildcards. Now fortunately they all have a similar uh, it, that doesn't seem to be uh, as big of an issue as it could be. We'll, we'll put it that way. An, an asterisk generally means match a character and it may mean match any or no character depending on uh, the, the tool you're using. So it, it may be more a degree rather than completely different as in the asterisk means um, jump up and down and, and uh, ring the bell 50 times uh, in one tool where it means match something in, in another tool. That's not how that's going to work. So let's go forward here. So can we use wildcards just about anywhere? Well, yeah, you can. Um, let's take a look here. I'm in the ATSCIS, so let's open a new terminal. And let's jump into a different terminal type. I can change the profile. We'll go ahead and change that, and we'll uh, zoom in here. OK. So notice. The asterisk on the command line is a wildcard. It basically means match anything. So if I do this on this new terminal, uh, if I do cd to d asterisk slash c asterisk, it's actually not going to do exactly what I want it to because I have to give it something more than that uh, because there's more than one, for instance. So let me do this as is and show you. CD to cars. So let me do this. CDs. And that'll take me into the CIS 204. But you notice what happened. It matched the D documents and then it matched the C. Let me go back to my home and let's CD to D and see what happens. Desktop. But that's interesting. Why did it do desktop? Because we go back. Desktop was the first D. <laughs> Documents then downloads. Why did it match CDD slash C and get me cars? Well, if we go back up, you'll see that cars was first, CIS is second. So if I want to match CI and I have something that I know is there called cars, I'm going to have to do that. Okay. So that's that match. Asterisk, using the asterisk can be dangerous. Um, since this is being recorded before I've had a chance to stand up in front of the class, I'm going to tell you a story about a system administrator that we called Scary Larry. Um, you'll see two commands sitting underneath this Remember Scary Larry. And You'll notice that there's a hashtag, a hash sign, actually the pound sign. Um, yeah, I can't do that with this, but I can with this. Okay. 
Now let me do this. I'm going to CD back to my home directory. I'm going to do something a little odd. I'm going to become super user. Yeah, I have to give it a password. Now look at the prompt. It's that hash sign. Hmm. Guess where I'm at? I'm at the root. And who am I? I'm no longer Hugo. I'm root at Brownsburg. So what you've got in front of you is Scary Larry had uh, some spark ones. Uh, and they were uh, not the pizza box, but the donut box size spark ones. And they only had 120 meg hard drives on them. And what I told you is literally, I didn't make a mistake. It isn't 120 gig. It is a 120 megabyte hard drive. These were small drives. Um, and we were trying to load data on them. And Larry says, there's not enough room. So he CD'd to the slash bin directory. The bin directory is the binaries directory. Everything needed to run the machine is sitting in the binaries directory. Pretty much everything needed to run the machines in the binary directory. And then he issued the following command, rm space dash r space asterisk. What does that command do? Well, the rm is a remove command. If I do this, and we'll go over here back to that, uh, come back here. So let's do this. Let's do a man on rm. OK, rm, remove files or directories. Well, that's interesting. Dash f force, in other words, I don't care what it is, just get rid of it. Dash i, prompt before the removal, which would have been the nice way to have done that. There's this no, but look at this. Dash r. Remove directories and their contents recursively. So what did Larry do? He went into slash bin. He did an rm space dash r, which is recursively remove everything in the bin directory. And he matched everything that was there. He didn't ask for a single file. He didn't ask for a particular type of file. He removed all of the working binaries that the machine needed to run. Uh, the machines crashed almost immediately after he did this. And there was about six of them. We had to reload them all from scratch and start over again. So the asterisk, this wild card asterisk, it can be very powerful. And if you use it with the wrong tools and as the wrong user type, it can be very dangerous. So. How do wildcards work in grep? Well, grep works a little bit differently than the command line. The uh, asterisk doesn't match just everything. It'll, it'll match anything, basically. But a dot tells grep to match any single character. The dot asterisk tells grep, grep to match anything. So in grep, you're going to need a dot asterisk to do the same thing as an asterisk will do on the command line. So here's the fun thing. You can ask, use the asterisk to match something very specific. So a V asterisk will match anything, a V or VV, because it's only matching the one. A VV asterisk will match VVV or VVV. A VVV asterisk will match VV, VVV, or VVVV. So interesting. That's neat. OK, next. So how does this work? So if I, I do a cat wildcard underbar file.txt, which is sitting out here somewhere in, in our machines, there's the following information in it. Big, bad, underbar, or bad space bug, bag, bigger, and boogie. If I grep for b dot asterisk g, what do I find? I get everything. I get big because there's a B and then there's something and a G. I get bad bug because there's AD space BU in there and that matches the dot asterisk. I get the bag, I get bigger, and I get boogie. What happens if I match B dot asterisk G dot? 
Well, this becomes fun because it'll match bigger and it'll match boogie. But it won't match big because there's nothing following the G and it won't match bad bug because there's nothing following the G in bug and it won't match bag because again there's nothing following the G in, in uh, bag. So what about this grep GGG asterisk in the wildcard underbar file.txt? Well it'll match bigger because remember match GG or GGG or GGGG and it matches GG. Okay, well that's interesting. And that's grep. Oh well, wait. Well, how about this? If the dot is a single character wildcard, how do I do this? ls grep wildcard underbar file dot text, which will give me a wildcard underbar file 8 text or 9 text or 10 text. Well, it won't. Uh, 8 or 9 text. A wildcard underbar file dot text. So in this case, you have to escape the wildcard for the dot to be taken literally. And I have to put the quotes around it. So this case says ls pipe that to grep space wildcard underbar file single quote escape dot close quote text. And then it will only find the wildcard file dot text. Okay, so when you use, when you want to find something that has what is a wildcard in it, you have to escape it for it to be taken literally. So let me take a look at this. Interval expressions. The interval expression specifies the number of times to match the class in brackets. And we talked about this a bit earlier. So here in this case, I'm looking at a grep of a digit that is at least four places long in the file Audi underbar duty dot text. Okay, so what am I actually doing here? At the beginning of the text, I'm looking for the POSIX digit, 0 through 9. And I want to find examples where a digit occurs four times in succession in the Audi duty dot text. So the command should get the regular expression that contains four digits at the beginning of the line, which is what that uptick is in the file. And it will produce the following output. It'll find that. So let me go over here and find find dot name Audi underbar duty dot text Audi underbar duty dot text and dot print dash print that is so there it is uh, let's see to um, files cd to dot slash files slash okay there we go now let's do this let's grab this command and we'll paste it in there and we'll see what it does found them just as we expected okay so there's more ways of doing this there's the grep and then it finds this in the uh, Etsy group file for instance so if I do this let's take a look at this and go ahead and I'm going to clear the screen plug that in there look at that there are all the groups uh, in the uh, Etsy group file on ATS CIS. So let's do this. What does the dash V mean? Give me all the groups that aren't four digits in length. Ah, okay. Well, isn't that special? Of course, more than one interval expression can be so in this case I want digits of 4 and 4 which is the uh, in the Etsy password file that's going to be the user ID and the group ID so let's see what we get okay there it is so basically um, what you're doing here is you're asking for a single type of character and you're asked telling it how many times that it should occur in a row 
So in this case, I'm looking at digits four times. Give me anything that has four digits. In the second case with the dash V option, give me anything but a setup with four digits. In the third case, I said give me four digits uh, surrounded by colons and another four digits surrounded by colons from a specific file. So in the previous example, you asked Rep to find two four-digit numbers, and they were delineated by the colon character. And, and it's a bit confusing since the colon is also used to declare that you want a posit uh, character class. But we'll talk about that in class. So multiple string occurrences. So here's a case of uh, find a string that appears more than once on a line. So here's the output of the grep command. So I vi'd this back references dot example, and I'm looking for uh, an A through Z or an O through 9, and I want it uh, occurring uh, more than once. So you can see how that works. And we'll, we'll do this in class also. So there's this back reference mechanism. Uh, this mechanism matches whatever an earlier part of the regu regular expression match. So two steps. First, it enclose a sub-expression in the uh, escape parentheses and escape close parentheses. Second, use a digit with an escape in front of it, 1 through 9, to match whatever was matched by the nth earlier sub-expression enclosed in parentheses. It can be useful to find duplicated text and for matching quotes, but by far the biggest cause of performance slowdowns when using grep is the use of back references. So you have to understand that some of these tools will cause uh, CPU time to accumulate for the tool and or if you're running it against something that is a very large file it's going to take longer because it had the, uh, the way it has to go through and look at everything uh, inside out. So there is something also known as an extended regular expression. It, you don't confuse it with basic regular expressions. The ERE allows for an OR ex expression uh, alternation and the command is egrep not grep with an option well it is there's a grep dash e so if i do this if i egrep on this audi duty dot text let's copy this in and do this let's clear that so we can see this i'll do that every line that has an a3 or an a4 will show up in this. I don't see any references. Well, there's the A4. So it finds an A3 or an A4 on the line. So you can do the following, which is look for sedans or cabriolets. Yeah, okay. And you can do that, and we'll do that in class. So word matching with is a GNU extension. So look at this. I'm using... Uh, an escape uh, greater than and an, pardon me an escape less than and escape greater than to delineate the start and end of a word so let me show you this let's see if I can find dogs and cats dot text here there it is okay let's paste this into here and put it uh, actually let me do this control L Let's paste this into here and put a T at the end of that. Look what it found. At the beginning of a word boundary and at the end of the word boundary, it found cat, lowercase or uppercase, or cats, lowercase or uppercase. Look what it didn't find. It didn't find a bear cat, and it didn't find the cat in catapult. That may come in handy in a project. Hmm, okay. Let's move on. So here's some helpful grep websites, and you can use these uh, as you need them. Uh, we're going to be working with fields, and we're going to be covering sednoc before long. But Unix encourages text files. And again, that goes back to why they ended up getting the a big machine, is because they convinced their management that they could do text with it. The fields of text are separated with some type of character, and comments are always almost always denoted with a um, hash or a, a pound sign at the start of the line. 
White space is more difficult to deal with than a special character delimiter. For, uh, for instance, uh, a colon. Um, the comma separated value, the, the spreadsheet that's been exported as a CSV is an example. In this case, a colon may be a good thing to use in a CSV as a separator. So there's another command called the cut command. And this cuts data from text files either by field or character. The cut can be used to extract characters from a line. So let me do this. I'm going to do an ls-l and I, if I do an ls-l this is what it does. Okay. So let me clean that up again. This is going to do an ls-l, pass the output of the ls-l to the cut command, and grab the first 10 characters. Interesting. OK. Well, that's nice. It can be used to extract fields from a file using the dash d and the dash f options. So here's another way to do this. Let's do this. I'm going to clean that up. And I'm going to cut fields 1 and 5 out of the Etsy password file. Hmm. Any time where there is an uppercase letter after this. Hmm. Interesting. System user, user 4. Nice. OK, that worked. So the, the cut command identifies the field delimiter as a colon. It then asks for the first and the fifth field to be cut from the specified file. The grep command asks for only those entries in the output of cut that have a colon followed by an uppercase letter. So you can try the cut command without the grep to see the difference. So you, we'll do this in class. So the sort command uh, allows a file to be restored, resorted based on the configuration of a set of options, the dash D's dictionary. Dash K defines that there's a sort order field, in other words, the key. So dash K5, which sorts on the fifth field with anything other than a white space delimiter being declared with the dash T option. Now the delimiter, how you specify a delimiter will change with command to command because they weren't written by the same folks. A dash n tells the sort command that it's a set of integers that you're sorting. The dash g would be used for a floating point. Why g? I don't know. The dash r reverses the sort order. That may become important. And even more fun, the dash u returns unique records only. In other words, don't give me duplicates. So there's a few other things about regular expressions that we need to talk about. The, the basically, they're useful on the command line and in editing tools. The concepts remain the same for each tool that uses them. However, there are slight differences, which are frustrating, in how they're implemented. Their use of meta characters and how meta characters are escaped in the various commands and tools. Man pages and online searches, for examples, are exceptionally helpful. So use the man page. Don't hesitate to search for a specific command or how to use a command online. So we're going to be using VI with regular expressions. We'll be doing this in class. Uh, the focus is not VI, but on using regular expressions. You can also do that using the example 3.1 in the Unix shells by example. It's on page 71. And we will, in class, open the file picnic with VI and then find all the words that will do the regular expressions. So we've got a lot of work to do in class. We'll have some fun with it. Uh, the hands-on piece of this is absolutely necessary. What you've seen will be you know, in this lecture, of course, is confusing. But it should make some more sense when we get to class. So thank you for your attention. Um, I suspect that you'll be tested over some of the uh, things that were brought up in this. Talk to you later.